So today we are going to talk about the patient education on periodontal disease. So when the periodontal disease meaning that some disease in your gum tissue, what is gum tissue? Gum tissue, tissue is some this red part of your tooth, consists of soft tissue. And then this uh, white one or this one is uh, enamel. Enamel is the outer, most outer layer of your tooth. And then this red one is soft tissue in your oral cavity, which is called periodontal tissue or easily gum tissue. So when you look at this thing, uh, the original appearance of gum tissue is like some little pale pink like pale pink color and then their margin, the edges is like here, like here. But when you look at these two teeth, you can see the original gum tissue should cover like this, but their gum tissue level is go down like this. Also, this tooth also should cover gum tissue until here, but somehow they go down. So which is called periodontal disease. And when you look at the color of the, this gum tissue, this parental tissue is pale pink color, but a little bit reddish in here and here. So we can see, and then these two tooth is a little bit good, but when you look at this gum tissue color, a little bit reddish, so which is some sign of the inflammation of a gum tissue. So from, your car, from the color and then some soft tissue covering, Position we can we can determine this tooth is involved in in periodontal tissue or periodontal disease or not. Anyhow, to prevent or to cure this periodontal disease, we have to educate the patient. So this is our topic for this dialogue with six number one. So unfortunately, uh, Jessie today is busy for her work, so just I'm going to do by myself, both dentist and patient. So. So Jessie, how was the teeth cleaning? It was very painful as I had expected, but I think that's because it has been so long since I had my tooth cleaned. According to your x-ray, one third of your bone level under the gum has been lost. Gum recession is late to the bone loss. My mom lost her teeth at a young age. Is my gum condition inherited? Theoretically, some people are more likely to have gum disease, but it's very rare. If gum inflammation is untreated for a long time, it destroys a soft tissue and bones around the teeth. That's called periodontal disease. However, it doesn't mean that all people with gum inflammation will have periodontal disease. Our own immune system can play a big role in it. I understand. By the way, I thought teeth cleaning would be done during one visit, but the dental hygienist said I have to come back for future further treatment. That is correct. Your lower left molar needs a deep cleaning because you have lots of infection under your gum. Please make an appointment in two weeks. There's one more thing. Look at the x-ray. There's a big cavity between your wisdom tooth and the adjust molar. Can you see this dark spot here? Yes, it is cavity. It doesn't hurt. I want to leave it alone. Yes, there is cavity. Unfortunately, we are not unable to so I save the tooth. So when you look at this dialogue, they mention about the x-ray. X-ray is some a tool for checking the density of the tooth or bone. So your bone level under the gum has been lost. So actually the bone level has maintained the proper position. So for example, uh, this is some tooth. So this is some soft tissue like this. But originally your bone level is like this. So this is covered by the bone this area, but when they start to parent disease, this uh, outermost soft tissue is go down because of this bone is degraded and this bone level also they can go down. So the soft tissue level is an indicator of the bone tissue level. So that is why when they mention, but only way to determine how the bone is degraded can be detected by the x-ray. So. So, that, so dentist mentioned your bone level of gum tissue has been lost, which means the bone level is go down compared to the normal range. And then gum recession. Why is gum recession? This is called gum recession. The original gum tissue level is around here. They should recover like this. 
for some, for some, but for some reason, its gum tissue is receded. So TB is called gum recession. So patient mentioned my mom lost her tooth at a young age because of some gum tissue problems. So, but we can say that genetically also the genetic factor can be involved to induce some parental disease. But most of the disease is from the environmental things. So this is some their concept. And then, um, so when the gum inflammation is untreated for a long time, you that destroys the soft tissue and the bone tissue together. So which is called parent disease. So we can say like that. But when when you show some gum inflammation initially, but when there is no uh, no further some bone and parental recession, which is not called parental disease. So a gum inflammation is an initial initial uh, sign or maybe starting sign of the parental disease. But when we say parental disease, it's a more severe form. So when when they start to gum inflammation and then loss of the a bone tissue and then gum recession, which is called parent disease. So you can a little bit distinguish the gum inflammation and parent disease. Yeah. So any other most pre important way to prevent the parent disease is to clean your tooth regularly. Yeah. So using your tooth brushing or scaling, we will discuss about it later. And then uh, this Sentences describe about uh, lots of infection in your gum tissue, and then uh, when they check some big cavity, when they check the oral cavity, they found a big cavity between your rhythm tooth and adjacent molar. Yeah, maybe this is we cannot see detail about what is the meaning of this one because we, we don't have an X-ray, but we can say that when you see some kind of dark spot in the X-ray, which is some empty, empty means that can be a cavity or that can be a parent disease. So both of them is possible. But in here, uh, based on this dialogue concept, maybe they want to mention about the parent disease and the different disease, disease, disease that, that can make some dark spot in your tooth. So because we cannot save the tooth, so there is no way to, there is no way to cure it and then maybe just remove it. That's all. The second one is that uh, another uh, thing to cure parental disease is the root planning and the cure taste. So I want to share one, share one, sorry, yeah, share one video to, to describe the root planning and cure taste. For many reasons, sometimes people aren't able to maintain the recommended frequency of dental checkups. Oftentimes, when an extended time has gone in between cleanings, a more advanced cleaning may be recommended by your doctor. Harmful bacteria and hard tartar deposits called calculus build up on your teeth above and below the gum line, releasing toxins that cause gum disease. All so actually, when you this calculus, this um, uh, deposit of some bacteria on your food, or other tartar, any other or smoke things. So anyhow, something are deposited on your tooth. So this is some kind of harmful bacteria which can cause parental disease. So that's why we have to remove this one. You can say that how about when you when I use my toothbrush and then can I remove it? It's impossible because it's kind of stone. Can you remove the stone out of surface using your plastic tooth? Tooth brushing is impossible. So that's why we need another things, another strong instrument to remove this tartar or calculus. Also known as periodontitis. Unfortunately, this buildup occurs in areas that can't be taken care of by brushing, flossing, or even a regular dental cleaning. Over time, as periodontitis progresses, it can lead to increased inflammation, bleeding, receding gums, and ultimately receding bone tissue. 
your doctor can recommend a procedure called scaling and root planing to remove these deposits from your teeth. Scaling and root planing is a specialized procedure that removes excessive calculus and bacterial deposits beneath the gum line and is usually performed. Yeah, so this is a cold scaling. So scaling, uh, basically they are using ultrasonic scaler. Ultrasonic means that they vibrate very fast in ultrasonic range. And then from this uh, physical vibrating, they can physically remove this tartar on your tooth. Just upper the, this soft tissue level, basically. Formed with a hand scaler and an ultrasonic cleaner, which uses high frequency vibration to separate the calculus from the tooth. This procedure is for advanced periodontitis cases, and in many cases is so extensive that it must be done in stages. So actually, and then when you use this kind of manual uh, instrument, which is called curette, curette, uh, and then when you do this kind of similar removing, uh, removing this tartar from your tooth, which is called curettage. So the basic different thing between the scaling and the curettage is that for scaling, the dentist use ultrasonic scaler. For curettage, dentist use hand instrument, which is called curette. And then the position, the treatment position of the scaling is just basically just above the periodontal tissue. I mean, just exposed part of the tooth. But for curettage, you can a little bit deeply uh, put this this curet and then remove the underlying tartar from the tooth or root. So there are two things. One is the what kind of thing do you use for doing scaling and the hand instrument curet. The second one is that where you remove the tartar. One is just expose part of the tartar or including uh, underlying tartar of the tooth or root. So this is some two different things between the curated and scaling. But the basic concept is the same, to remove tartar from your tooth or root. It may require multiple appointments to complete in order to ensure you are as comfortable as possible. Can you see, can you see this kind of little sharp thing can go inside deeply of this soft tissue. So you can a little bit remove these things, this tartar from your gum tissue. ...during the procedure. By removing the deposits and bacteria, this procedure is in many cases able to halt the spread of periodontitis. Your doctor will help you determine the next steps for continued rehabilitation. So, as you can see, or when you remove the tartar, this gum tissue level can go up, which is a normal healthy level. And then when you see this color is also pale pink. This is the normal healthy color of the, your parental tissue. So this is uh, your, sorry, original condition. When the deposit, when the tartar is deposited, you can see the gum level is go down, go down, and then after removing the tartar, this gum level is go up. Maybe a little bit the bone level behind underlying this gum tissue can go up. However, if these symptoms are not treated appropriately, the progression can advance to a point of tooth and bone loss requiring costly and painful reconstructive dentistry to treat. Yeah, as you see, the color of the gum tissue is changed to the pale pink to the dark red. This is a um, color indicator of the periodontal disease. And then you can see many tartar can be deposited on the tooth and root. And then because of that, uh, this is some home of the bacteria, and then the bacteria can in release some toxin, and this toxin can uh, degrade the bone, and then this degraded bone can induce, can make some down, uh, down level of the gum tissue. So this is some cascade of the parental disease. Just to, to treat. Okay, from this. Uh, Based on this concept, we can do this dialogue. Okay, Jesse, how are you today? Are there any changes in your general health since your last visit? Nothing changed. I'm going to give you a deep cleaning today. Do you have any questions or concerns? Is it possible to get healthy gums back after having this treatment? 
It can help to stop gum inflammation. I'm going to remove infected heart tissue and soft tissue together. This procedure can prevent reattachment of microorganisms on tartar. Thus, it will make your gums firm and healthy. Is that the type of surgery? Mm, no, it little, it's a simple procedure to eliminate all the infected tissue. Tissue. I will freeze your gums. It may taste bitter. Okay, I'm ready. I will give you a pro pro procedure mouth syringe. It will reduce bacteria in your mouth. Lean with it for 30 seconds and spit it back into the cup, please. Your teeth may feel sensitive for a few days. It is normal symptom after this treatment. It will get back to normal in a week. You should avoid spicy and hot food for a few days. So actually when you do the scaling and cure taste, normally there's no anesthesia. But if the tartar is deposited very deeply under the soft tissue, as you expect, it's very, uh, you, the patient can feel painful when you use the scaler or curatase under the gum tissue. So that's why we have to make it numb using anesthesia. So in here, uh, they describe, I will free your gums, which means I'm going to use some anesthesia, anesthetic, uh, some injection, and then this injection can make the gum tissue numb. Uh, numb means no feeling, no pain at all. And then you can, uh, you can strongly remove the tartar even under the gum tissue level. So using uh, ultrasonic scaler as well as curtage. So uh, you you can be some you can have some mixed idea about the scaling and curtage. So actually scaling and curtage is normally without anesthesia. Uh, this is a normal procedure, but when this tartar is heavily deposited under the gum tissue you have to inject some anesthetic uh, solution and then make it make the gum numb and then do the same procedure under the gum tissue level. But and then this kind and then in that case you you can also use ultrasonic scaler and then cure it, but which is not called uh, just scaling. Yeah, because this is another term to describe this kind of uh, deep removal of tartar procedure. So maybe soft gingiver curatage or soft gingiver scaling. We can say like this. Soft gingiver means soft means that underlying. Gingiver means so your gum tissue level. So soft soft gingiver scaling or soft gingiver curatage. We can add the soft gingiver to describe these things. And then this is called uh, on, at this moment, we can we will not use any kind of how can I say knife to cut the gum tissue or other things. We just use our curatage or ultrasonic scaler, so which is called a non-surgical procedure for periodontal disease. Because surgical means that they should use some knife, but in here we don't use any knife, so this is called a non-surgical procedure. So, and then other thing is that in your home, you can do this kind of flossing and toothbrushing together. But many people will not know about the, how you exactly do the flossing. So I will share this video, what is the normal concept or how you do it successfully the flossing. Flossing is a critical part of caring for your smile and most of us don't do it enough. That could be because we don't know the proper way to do it. Take a minute and follow these simple instructions. Take about 18 inches of floss and wind most of it around the middle finger of one hand. Take the rest and wind it around the other middle finger of the other hand. Pinch the floss between your thumbs and forefingers, leaving one to two inches in between. Gently guide floss between two teeth by using a zigzag motion. Do not snap the floss between your teeth. If the floss is hard to get between your teeth, Ask your dentist or hygienist about the variety of floss holders or interdental cleaning devices that are available. When the floss reaches the gum line, curve it into a C-shape around the side of the tooth. Slide floss up and down against the tooth surface and under the gum line. Repeat for each tooth. So actually, when you, when you imagine about the flossing, just you up and down this area, right? But it doesn't mean anything for floss processing when you do like that. 
if you want to do really first thing this this knee this uh, flossing knee can go this way this way means that uh, between your root and your gum tissue this is very important things but and actually you feel a lot and then you can see a lot of breathing from your gum tissue when you do not not only this one but also this deeper side so one one several time for the left several time for the right and then go up and then after you using one spot for doing like that and then when you switch this spot to the other this part for next tooth because let's imagine you want to use the same spot all for this tooth this bacteria can be spread out to the other tooth so that's why we have to change the exact spot depending on the tooth things tooth including the back side of your molars floss each tooth thoroughly with a clean section of floss flossing every day is one of the best ways to care for your smile find out more visit unitedconcordia.com Uh, if you look at the thread, so I'm going to prepare this thread here. Yeah. So like this, using your third finger, this not, not to mention, not to intend to mock you, as anyhow, like this, third finger, one, two, three, and then three, 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 three circle, and then you are using this thumb, like this. So this is how you grip your tooth floss and then another finger is the third finger like this three circle one two three and thumb okay so using this one you can do like go up and left deeper upper and right and go down go and go down left and right so this is the way how to do the tooth brushing So you should brush your teeth properly to maintain healthy teeth and gums. How many times a day should I brush? It's very important to brush your teeth at least twice a day, after breakfast and before bed. With a toothbrush with soft breath. Can you show me the best way to brush my teeth? Uh, place a toothbrush along the gum line at a 45 degree angle. When you do like 45 degree angle, and not this one, 45, 45 degree angle. And then apply foam pressure so the bristles can slide under the gum line. So you should vibrate your toothbrush with short back and forth movement. Then brush towards chewing surface. Brush two or three teeth at a time. Then move on the next tooth. Teeth. Don't forget to brush your tongue gently. I see. How often do you floss your teeth? I'm not a big fan of flossing. Is it really necessary? Brushing is not enough to remove biofilm between your teeth. Take a piece of floss about half the, half the length of your arm. Wind the floss around your middle finger and then hold tightly with your thumb and index finger on both hands. After that, tighten a section of the approximately 3 cm of floss across your fingertips. Insert the floss into space between your teeth with a zigzag movement. Wrap the tooth with the floss and then move gently with up and down motion. I don't think I can floss every day. Just try two or three times a week at first. Then we will see what happens by your next appointment. Okay, I will work on it. So for tooth brushing, tooth brushing. So let's say this is this is tooth, and then maybe some many people do like this is some uh, your chewing part and your enamel, and this is your gum level. Let's say this is a gum level. Most people are doing like just you just clean the enamel, just outer part of the uh, tooth, but it's not good. Actually, the main purpose is to, tooth brushing is to remove certain things inside of the gum tissue. So, you cannot approach this gum tissue using here, using this horizontal angle. So, you should go up like 45 degree, and then this end, end of the brushing brush, bristle can penetrate the gingival tissue so and then you start to vibrate like this and then going up to the true 
twin part or not, so like this. So 40, 45 degree angle and then approach and then vibrating down and up, down and up. Yeah, this is the normal way how to do the twist brushing as a professional way.